Now uh, we will talk about coupling constant. That's uh, uh, another major aspect of NMR spectra, which helps in interpretation of complex spectra like of biomolecules. So let's look at this a, comp a compound here in trans and cis configuration. So in trans configuration, you see the protons are on opposite side. In cis configuration, they are on the same side. If you look at the NMR spectra, the both the proton will get a single peak and each peak would be splitted uh, uh, in a doublet. Why in a doublet? Because in neighborhood, there is one proton in neighborhood of the, each of these proton. So as per n plus one rule, so one plus one. So you get a doublet for in each case. In case of trans configuration, in trans compound, you will get same doublet of doublet, uh, sorry, doublets in each peak. Whereas in case of cis configuration also, you get two peak, each peak is doublet. So just by looking at the peak split, you cannot differentiate between sense and trans configuration of a compound. So here, uh, but there is a difference in both, both, both the peaks. What is the difference? Difference is the distance between these splitting. In trans and cis, you get uh, doublets. But if you look at the distance, distance between two peaks in a splitting, that is represented by J and that is actually called coupling constant. So J is a distance, the coupling constant in NMR spectra is distance between two splitted peaks and that is in term of frequency. So in case of uh, trans configuration of this compound, the distance is 15 megahertz, 15 hertz, sorry. Whereas in case of cis compound, the distance is 10 hertz. So by looking at the distance between peak split, one can differentiate between cis and trans configuration, cis and trans compounds. So the coupling constant that is represented by J is the distance between two adjacent peaks of a split NMR signal in hertz. For example, in the same compound CL3, CL, CL2 is a quartet. So if you, if you look at any two adjacent peak, you can take adjacent peak here also, this one or this one, whichever, whichever you want. In all the cases, the distance would be same. And that is represented by J. So for example, this is B peak. So the coupling constant for B peak is represented by J, B. And because this is splitted by A peak, A type of protons, so this is called JBA. Whereas for A peak, the coupling constant is called JAB. And uh, as per rule, the value of JBA is always JAB. The coupled protons, they have same coupling constant. Means if there are two protons in the neighborhood, they are splitting each other's signal they will have identical coupling constant. And that's have a very important information because in case of complex spectra, when you have many peaks, in that case, you can look at the peaks which are having same value of coupling constant. That simply means that those, uh, those, those protons, those peaks are in nearby. Those protons are in nearby. They are splitting each other's signal. That's why they have the same value of uh, coupling constants. So if you look at some of the compound here, in this case, the value of J would be seven. This is uh, distant than three sigma bone, so J value would be zero. In geminal coupling, the value of J is two. In trans coupling is 15. In cis is 10. And if you have long range coupling, where one of the bonds is double or triple bond, and you have more than three sigma bond away protons, this value of J is one. So the trans coupling constant is greater than the cis coupling constant. For example, in this compound trans 3 chloropropanoic acid, you see they are A and B protons. So if you look at J, uh, J value of J, A and J, B here, so that was 14 hertz in case of trans configuration. When these are in trans configuration. Whereas the same compound, if it's present in cis configuration, the value is actually nine hertz is lesser. And that also you can remember by the fact that 
in cis configuration the distance between two proton is less so that's how it's easy to remember less distance means less less uh, value of j in trans configuration is far away so you have value higher side that's a way to remember now look at the splitting diagram of a doublet of doublet so in this case there is a compound 112 trichloro 3 methyl butane as per rule you have four type of protons here a b c d so here we will talk about c c type splitting of c type of proton which is surrounded by b type and d type so it will not uh, follow the n plus 1 rule but the peak would be splitted so if there is no proton in neighborhood of the C proton you get a single peak like this this is the chemical shift of the signal of the HC proton if there were no splitting there is no no neighborhood proton but because it has in neighbor B and D types of proton so first uh, we'll see how B type is splitting it or you can you can consider D splitting first also it will not make much difference no difference in fact so first we'll consider the HC proton is splitted by B so B there is a one proton so as plus n plus one rule this one proton will split HC into two, two peaks in a doublet and this one and this one so this is splitting by HB proton and the coupling constant would be called here JCB so you get a doublet here of equal equal intensity now because D proton is also in the neighborhood so now D will split each of these doublets and D is also single it means 1 plus 1 2 so it will give doublet so the first peak will be split into doublet same the second also will be split into doublet so you get four peaks and uh, here the coupling constant is JCD so you get four peaks and these are doublets of doublet having same intensity <coughs> so the key points from here peaks can be split due to neighboring or different hydrogen atoms coupling constant measures the distance between two peaks in hertz the value of coupling constant does not depend on the field applied or the spectrometer frequency coupling constant help analyzing complex spectra as of proteins or nucleic acids uh, or protons in case of uh, macromolecules like proteins and nucleic acids so that's how you identify which are the protons in the neighborhood in case of complex spectra now proton exchange in NMR uh, in case of uh, some groups like uh, OH, NH and SH in presence of uh, slight acid or base the no split splitting is not observed these protons which are attached in OH group NH and SH group and in fact the signal for these are broader than other signals so that is because of a phenomena which is called proton exchange so like we ca in case of ethyl alcohol CS3CS2OH we know there are three types of proton you call them A type B type and C type the C type proton peak would be most uh, upfield is most shielded so you get a uh, triplet for this because there are two proton in the neighborhood of the methyl proton so is a triplet the B type of proton the CS2 proton is a multiplet and uh, A type proton is a triplet here because there are three proton in the neighborhood that's a, a spectra NMI spectra of ethyl alcohol when alcohol is pure and dry if you add a little acid trace of acid or base in that case uh, the B peak which was a multiplet is, is turned into a quartet C peak remain the same and the A peak in fact is become slightly broader and that's because of proton exchange so in proton exchange when trace acid or base is added into the compound having OH SH group in that case deprotonation occurs so the proton disappears from this this OH group so it's become O minus so this is called proton exchange so it, it does not cause splitting 
so there is no splitting when this proton is not there in NMR spectra it will not split the CH2 CH2 peak so when you add trace acid or base this is what you get in case of uh, spectra of ethyl alcohol the peak corresponding to OH group is become wider the splitting of pattern of B changes C remains same because this is away from the OH group So in fact, uh, in case of ROH, NH, NH amide groups, they are different value of frequencies where the peaks are observed. In ROH, you have 2 to 5 ppm. In amide, 1.5 to 4 ppm. In amide, is 5 to 8. In carboxylic OH group, the peak comes at uh, 10 to 12 ppm. So deuterium signal is also not observed in H1 NMR spectra. So that's why substituting deuterium is one of the method to verify the signal whether what kind of group is present. For example, in the same methyl alcohol, if, we, if deuterium D2O heavy water is added, in that case, this deuterium replaces the hydrogen here. So, and when deuterium is added, deuterium is, does not give the peak like uh, hydrogen gives in NMR spectroscopy so this peak uh, disappears from here so in the spectra you see here you try pure and dry alcohol spectra ethyl alcohol so you get these these peaks original peaks if you add D2, D2O in presence of trace of acid and base in that case this A peak disappears and of course splitting pattern of B also changes so if A is disappearing by adding D2O, it simply means there was a replaceable hydrogen present here which was giving this peak. So there must have been some OH or SH group where hydrogen is replaceable that is replaced by uh, D here in this case which is magnetically inactive does not give peak like hydrogen atom in NMR.